The debate over collection of value-added tax continues in Nigeria. What happens if rivers and Lagos states have their way? Who will lose and who will gain? We'll be getting answers on The Breakfast this morning. Also coming up is a discussion about 5G technology. How much can we achieve with it? And is it harmful like some people claim it is? Find out later on the show. And also, no more amnesty for bandits. And that's according to the Zamfara State Governor, Bilo Matawali. With that, we say good morning and welcome to another week here on Plus TV Africa. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. I am Osaogi Ogbong. And I am Annette Felix saying good morning to you. And thank you for joining us on the start of a beautiful week. How are you? I actually feel very good, funny enough. I had a fantastic weekend. I enjoyed every bit of myself no. and I'm thankful to be alive. How about you? I think you? I can say the same. You know, I walked, um, you know, all through the weekend. Well, well, except yesterday, but, you know, the shift that I ran on Saturday feels like I walked all through <laughs> the weekend. So, um, back to work again on Monday yeah. morning, but yeah. Let's we were go. on the same shift, right? Say that again? Yeah, so we're on the same shift, right? Absolutely. Fantastic. Absolutely. Anyway, let's... Um, get down to our major stories of today um one that seems like a comedy show makes me really laugh and the other two that that just reminds us of where we are regarding our security challenge the first story um zamfara state governor billy metawali went on to announce that he would no longer grant amnesty to bandits you know he said this when he was addressing the congregation um in the state i'm um, saying that you know He's gotten intelligence that these bandits want to repent, but that they had turned down the olive branch before and that he has changed his mind. He's not going to, you know, reach out with peace anymore and that the security agencies in the state would, you know, reach out to them with, with fire, you know, firepower and, you know, use all their military might to flush them out. You know, so this is really what he's saying here, um, Zanfra State Governor Bila Matawali. And... Um, I don't know really how this comes across. I have questions regarding if this is a little too late because despite the fact that we've had people like um, Sheikh Ahmed Gumi who has come out to say that um, the bandits feel left out, the bandits feel like you know the government has failed them and that's why they're now um, doing their own form of protest or strike by going ahead to kidnap people and cause chaos in the country regarding security and uh, saying that, you know, the government should reintegrate them, forgive them. But lots of security experts that we've seen have condemned this, saying this will only create um, a spiral of crime. People see that criminality seems to be rewarded and they will definitely continue um, crime and criminality. But it seems now that um, Zanfara State Governor um, Bella Metawali is leading towards, you know, the angle that this really um, isn't going anywhere. And, and it's quite a departure from his earlier statements saying that we should either choose um, an ending war with bandits or we should choose to um, reintegrate them. I mean, that really made headlines when he made that statement that, you know, we had this choice. He said he was in a dilemma right here and you either war or you negotiate and that he wasn't going to choose warring endlessly or he was going to negotiate. But now he's saying something different. Now he's saying something different, saying that um, he, was, he was actually going to go ahead and fight them um, to the last. Um, yeah. Really, is this a little too late? Oh, well, um, two things I'll start with. You know, the first one is um, for Shegumi. Um, you know, I, I don't think anybody has ever heard any bandit, you know, say those things that Shegumi is, you know, pointing out that, you know, there's the reason, um, you know, for their atrocities against the Nigerian state. So I'm not sure why he's doing free publicity for them or, you know, speaking on their behalf. To the best of my knowledge and everyone's knowledge, Chegumi is not a bandit or is not, not a part of, you know, that group of terrorists. So I'm not, I really don't know why, you know, that explanation is coming from. No one has ever interviewed any bandit and they said, oh, this is the reason they're, you know, committing these atrocities against the Nigerian state. That's one. And for the Zamfara state governor, uh, I'm really not even sure who told him it was up to him to grant amnesty to anybody um, or to take, uh, you know, the decision with regards how it will be handled. It's really mm -hmm. not up to him. You know, a lot of times these governors have argued that they are not in control of the security agencies in their state. So who is he going to be sending to carry out attacks on the bandits in the first place? Mm -hmm. um, it's not up to him. We know, no one needs his opinion in any way. 
um, whether we'll grant amnesty to bandits or not. Um, and it's sad that we're even having a conversation concerning granting amnesty to bandits, you know, and all of this madness started when, you know, the, the bandits and these terrorists were given, um, you know, some soft landing and then people took it upon themselves to start carrying out free uh, PR for terrorists and, you know, whitewashing them, you know, and giving excuses on their behalf as to why they have committed these very, very grave atrocities against uh, the Nigerian state, and, you know, and continue to, you know, give them that soft landing, then equating them to Niger Delta, you know, Avengers and um, um, men and, and the rest of them, which was very, very unfair, you know, in, in my um, opinion. Um, so that's when all of this conversation started about maybe there will be amnesty or not. Nobody asked, you know, any of these questions. I've always said it that the Nigerian state itself, you know, and first of all, all these conversations and all these talk mm -hmm. about uh, amnesty and, and whatnot is a, is a huge insult to millions of lives that have been affected, both those who have been, de have been killed and those who have been, you know, banished to, uh, to IDP camps over the years. It's a huge insult to those lives that have been affected by the actions of these ones. Um, so whoever it is that decides to be doing publicity on their behalf, you know, basically is very, you know, I would say very, very inhumane and, and very out of touch with the amount of damage that these people have caused, mm -hmm. um, you know, in one way or the other. Um, I've always said it, you know, that we need to understand what the Nigerian government's stance is with regards to terrorism. Um, there's no double standards with terrorism, you know, and there has to be a stance that the Nigerian government and the Nigerian people would take concerning terrorism, you know, naming, giving them different names, unknown gunmen, kidnappers, bandits, whoever you do, whatever you decide to call them, they, yeah. it's all terror and they are all terrorists. And so the Nigerian government needs to take a stand against terrorists, setting up different programs every day to either, you know, um, you know bring them back into society um, or, you know, give them new clothes or give them noodles mm -hmm. and, and all of that. Um, is not going to be the answer to some of our, all these challenges. The Nigerian government needs to take a stance, and it's not up to any governor in, this, uh, in the country, it's not that. up to any governor, wherever, mm -hmm. to give anybody soft landing. These are crimes against the Nigerian state, and there's no double standards. If you have killed, then there is you know, a place in constitution and mm -hmm. you know, in the Criminal Justice um, Act that you know, sets aside re, you know, punishment for, for things like that. If you have stolen, if, if, you, have, if you have rustled, if you have you know, chased people away from their villages, if you have killed dozens of people at night, if you have attacked the Nigerian army base and killed soldiers, which apparently in the news, I, I, I think it, I saw mm -hmm. it yesterday, happened um, yesterday. Um, the, there is very, very clear punishment for some of all these things. And, you know, we cannot be saying this for these people and then totally different exactly. story for another people. There, I don't know where the conversation on amnesty is coming mm -hmm. from. And it's really not up to Governor Matawali, um, you know, to, to grant anybody amnesty or consider whether it's going to give them amnesty or not. Definitely, definitely. I, I feel, you know, the rule of law should apply to everyone, regardless of who they are in society. And I, I believe that this issue with terrorism has just dragged on for too long because I want to believe that Nigeria, you know, our military have the capacity to flush out these bandits. I mean, we hear the president give statements almost every week asking, you know, those in charge of security in the country to go ahead and, and, and flush out those terrorists and deal with them decisively. You know, I can almost read what the templates of, you know, these press releases by the Nigerian army and the Nigerian police is because we see them every day. You know, they're awarded the same. You know, they, they have promised to, you know, decisively deal with these bandits, assured residents to go about their lawful activities. Well, how can people go about their lawful activities when, you know, there is no guarantee that it will come back home alive? What's, what's the guarantee that someone who's traveling, you know, from one state to another just to conduct business would not be kidnapped and held for ransom and maybe even killed after ransom is paid? So all these uncertainties regarding our security is very worrisome. Like I said, I want to believe that Nigeria should have a level of hold on what security should look like in this country. I mean, I have friends who plan to come into the country. They call me and say, oh, is the country safe? What is, what is the situation like? Can I come in now? Is it safe to come in now? What, what parts of Nigeria can't I go to? And I say, oh, major cities like Lagos. I mean, if people have to rely on such information, if we have other countries issuing press releases warning their, their residents not to travel here, if, the, if we see travel advisory saying, do not come into Nigeria because of so-and-so, how then can we begin to talk about things like investment and, and stuff like that in the country. Um, the government needs to do something and do it fast. And our next top trending story this morning um, is a shocker, right? 
a representative of a forensic company. It, it calls himself, itself the Sentinel um, Forensic Limited, have shown that bullets fired on the night of October 20th, 2020 at the Lake Toll Gate match that of the Nigerian army. And this comes as a surprise to many people because we've heard several statements from the Nigerian army regarding what happened on the night of that day. We first heard statements from them denying that they were ever present there. Then we heard statements saying that they only went there to enforce the curfew. Then we heard statements there saying that um, they didn't shoot at the protesters, they only fired into the air. And then they said what they fired into the air were just blanks. Even from the side of the Lagos state government, we continue to hear contradictory information regarding was there any loss of life? How many loss of life did we record? Some said one, some said three. But people who testified at the um, judicial panel of inquiry, you know, went on to say that they received as much as 90 dead bodies from the Lekki Gate site on the 20th of October, 2020. So it's been a lot of information here and there. But this information we're getting from this forensic company, the Sentinel Forensic Company uh, Limited, really just puts everything we know, you know about this lucky protest in doubt. I mean, it says that the blanks that were fired you know, on the night of the Lekki Togit mass massacre, as it's been called, did not match any you know, of the Nigerian army's records that he had. And <laughs> my God, we do need to get to the bottom of this. Don't you agree, Zawagay? Um, well, you know, I don't have to call them blanks. Um, um, first, you know, off is, you know, I'm sure a lot of people, you know, who saw this story, you know, would first of all be, you know, thinking to themselves, oh, is the panel still sitting? Um, a lot of Nigerians also didn't have much faith in the panel and what it will be able to achieve. Um, justice for, you know, whichever victims and the victims of the 20th of October mm -hmm. 2020. Um, we have a lot of people who didn't believe that there was going to be anything tangible that would come out of that because of the varying you know, information and testimonies and you know, the lack of truth and clarity. Um, it, it first of all wasn't necessarily up to the Sentinel group to carry out you know, that. The government should have its own forensic investigation and forensic team. But you know, private um, you know security firms can also carry out forensic investigation. You know, either you know by themselves, I believe, or you know by you know, um, hired, uh, by, the uh, hired by the government. Um, but some things that I will point out: the Sentinel Group has also you know released another statement, dispelling the news report. You know, and the way that it was stated, mm. um, the way that it was put out, it, it was uh, stated that all oh, the Nigerian Army um, bullets and some of the casings that were found there definitely belong to the Nigerian Army, and were you know. Um, 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 the reasons for those uh, dead bodies that were found there, or that you know, to, to happen that night. Um, so they put out a state counter statement saying that their findings and their testimony didn't necessarily indict anybody and didn't necessarily say that the Nigerian army killed anybody. Um, that everybody is innocent until pr proven guilty. That they were only just sharing the fact that those cases that they found there were actually belonging to the Nigerian Did army. Did you expect anything and that's else? What, no, I'm just saying. They, they had to put out a counsel statement because of the way that the story was uh, We shared. saw a similar um, story when, you know, a doctor from, I think, the Reddington Hospital went on to testify about the number of bodies he saw. And then we saw counter statements from the hospital denying, denying well, such. So it's, it's, well, um, it's, it's not, nothing new just, just to clarify, I don't, I don't want to leave that part of you know, the, uh, the conversation out. Um, so they've put out a counter, a counter statement saying that nobody is guilty. They have not indicted anybody. Mm -hmm. anybody. They were only uh, were sharing the, you know, their findings from their own um, forensic report. Um, and that the Nigerian army is not guilty. Nobody is guilty. Um, nobody has been indicted um, at all. Um, but one thing that I will point out is the fact that they carried out these forensic investigations 87 days after the, you know, the uh, incident. I'm not sure what they expected to find after 87 days. Um, um, there was uh, traffic and there was movement you know, across that place what, one day or two days after that incident happened. It was already a very, very you know, damaged crime scene, um, I believe. And nobody, including um, uh, former Governor Fashola, uh, or, or um, investigative, uh, you know, Fash or, or I don't know what to call him now. Agent um, Fash. Agent Fash, exactly. Including Agent Fash. Mm -hmm. yeah, 
would have been able to find any evidence there or you know one or two weeks or three weeks later you know not 87 days later mm. so i'm not sure what the sentinel group was was you know that's you know really really looking to find 87 days after but maybe that's the time that they had and if you look at all, all, all the clients you know the forensic reports that come out years later and still be able to catch you know or, uh, prove someone guilty mm -hmm. Um, but I would just, you know, it, it, with respect to those who lost their lives on that day and all through the period of, you know, the NSARS protest, mm -hmm. um, because, of course, I, I, I want to believe that, you know, it's our duty as press and as Nigeria that, you know, somehow, some way justice will be found um, or served to, for those lives that were lost. Um, and so out of respect for those people, I wouldn't go too far, you know, just simply say, well, let the panel continue, you know, with its um, findings and with its research and whatever is necessary. And hopefully somebody will be indicted, you know, somebody will be made to answer questions. It's just sad that we live in a country where a lot of times these things happen, nobody really gets to answer mm. these things. If you remember in 2015, I will always mention this, there was a bombing in Iran, in Borno State, by the Nigerian Air Force that they owned up to and said, oh, that their pilot misfired or there was some, you know, failure of information. Um, um, and, that, you know, that led to the death of 150 people in Borno State when they fired into a, a gathering or IDP camp or something. To date, I haven't seen or nobody has seen that anybody has been made to pay for those deaths or nobody has been fired. Nobody has been, you know, asked real questions with regards to what happened on that day. But 150 Nigerians died on that day. And, you know, we've moved on. Pretty much same thing with the, you you know, the Shiites, you know, um, in, in Zara, massacre in Zara. 347 people, according to federal, um, the Nigerian government's uh, figures, um, all the people there would say more, up to 1,000 people that were killed on that day, um, on those two days. Still nobody has been answered, you know, asked uh, serious questions. Nobody has been found guilty. Nobody has been, you know, really, really, you know, challenged with the rules of engagement of the Nigerian army. Were there any, any army casualties? Did any Nigerian soldiers suffer any? Because you can't kill, you know, 300 people and not get any, any casualty at all. It means that the other side were armed. That's what it simply means. Um, so, you know, looking at those experiences and, you know, even OD, you know, back then, or on just time, you wouldn't really expect that anybody will be asked serious questions um, with regards, um, you know, the death and crimes, you know, on that scale. But mm -hmm. let's hope, I will continue to encourage the panel to do what it can and put out the, as close as possible, truth um, with, you know, regards to what happened on the 20th of October, 2020. Mm -hmm. And our final top trending story. Um, we know that last week, Monday, um, September 6th, we saw videos of um, Ebony State Governor Dave Omahi um, speaking to journalists after a meeting with President Muhammad Buhari where he went on to um, carry out what some would say <laughs> seems like a prayer session for the country and for the presidency. Um, we have Dave Omahi um, on camera saying that he prays that Nigeria has a president that has a good heart like President Muhammad Buhari and that you know it was going to be for the good, for the interests, for the unity of Nigeria, and that Nigeria needs a president, you know, with that anointing, an anointed president. He put out all those prayers. Let's uh, actually take a closer listen. Oh well, um, we should have that clip. I, I think we can play that clip. Um. He prays. Nigeria gives another president like Buhari. <coughs> I said, 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 come. What has gone wrong with, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, you mean there shouldn't be psychiatric check on that governor? You see, psychophancy. And, and you know the president knows that you are telling lies. I saw a governor saying that uh, he prays. Nigeria gets another president like Buhari. Come. I said, 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 come. What has gone wrong with, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. Was the state governor yes and weekend they actually responding to Dave Umahi who um, called for prayers um, asking for an anointed president. Um, you heard him describe um, Umahi as a psychophant and a liar, you know, saying that he also needs a psychiatric check. Yeah, uh, well, um, so with, with Nigerian politics, uh, there is always a you know, big space for psychophancy, um, you know, and it's not, it's not new. Um, it happens in every sphere of the Nigerian political space, every single corner. There's always you know, space. There's those who know that you are complete, completely useless with regards um, 
you know, state governorship or local government, you know, gov um, you know, leadership or what whatever level, you would always have, you know, supporters that would blindly, you know, maybe because of their own personal interest or because, you know, they want you to see them, you know, and, and favor them somehow, some way. Um, it is only not expected when you see it from, you know, coming from a person, you know, as high as a governor um, who's not able to, you know, speak truth. But I would also say that regardless of how, you know, many Nigerians see the way that governance has been run on, you know, under the current administration since 2015. Um, regardless of how many people have been affected and lives that have been lost, businesses that have been, have been closed, those who have been affected by the social media ban, there's so many, you know, of these challenges. There is also those who believe, I don't know how they do it, but there's those who believe that this is also one of the best you know, governments that we've had in Nigeria, somehow, some way, from their own, uh, own understanding. And I don't want to rule out the space of, you know, that existing. And so Governor Omahi might be one of those people that regardless of what you think, you know, believes that, oh, this is one of the best, you know, governments that we've had in Nigeria for a very, very long time. Um, there's a lot of indices that might prove otherwise, you know, with regards to our security and with our economy and with corruption and healthcare and education and so many other things. But there will always be those who believe that it is, you know, the very best. Mm. Um, I've spoken with, you know, a few people some time, you know, and they believe that, oh, you know, this is one of the great best presidents, mostly because of how it affects them. So there's those who might be affected because there's now trains between Lagos and Ibadan. There's those who might be affected because, well, you know, some people are now buying their local rice. There's those who might be affected, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I mean positively now, um, because of those tiny, tiny things here and there. But if you want to look at what governance truly is, the you know, and the body language, the bigger picture, you know, what really it should be for a president, you know, and what should be presidential, what you expect from a person who made those promises in 2014 in the build up to the elections, um, you know, you may rate it completely different. Um, and so I understand where Governor Wike is coming from, you know, com countering Governor Omai's um, uh, views and saying that, you know, we very likely that person needs psychiatric, you know, evaluation. Um, because he completely doesn't agree. Um, and there's many people who also would be on the same side with, you know, Governor Wiki. It's, it's, it's just, it's politics, you know, and it's the way that it happens. Governor Mai is also one of those who were, you know, in whispers here and there, uh, you know, um, saying, oh, well, there was whispers about him maybe aspiring to be president at some point. And so, you know, they will play politics, they will mm -hmm. be psychophants, you know, because of what they feel they can achieve in the next couple of years or, you know, in, the, in, the, in, in their own bigger picture, which might be different from the bigger picture of another uh, uh, another person. Mm -hmm. okay. um, we would always expect that there would be leadership that would be able to speak truth to power, that would be able to at least be honest, you know, with the people, be, be able to push, put, put themselves or position themselves in a way that we can see honesty and see truth. Um, there's people in Ebony who would even in, in, in the, his wife may not even agree with him um, with what he's saying, but well, that's where they are. Okay, let's now take a listen to that um, clip where Dave Omahi was given prayers for the presidents of the country. God will also give us the next president who has good hearts, like uh, President Buhari, for the good of this country. We need uh, God's own anointing, our anointed uh, president, for the interests and unity of this country. Okay, God will give us a president who has anointing, who has a good heart, like the president. And it makes me really ask, like, what really is the line between politics and religion? Uh, for 2023, should we be expecting a priestly ordination with anointing no. or a presidential election? No, because neither, neither are we going to be voting any pastors either. So um, I, I really want to understand where he's coming from with... Well, he, you know, he, he, he has, he, he has um, um, what's the word now, moved to the APC. You know, so, yeah, I mean, we saw the same thing with, you know, Remy Tinubu, who was trying to shut down another uh, sitting senator, you know, and say, no, are you, are you now a Wolf PPP member? Are you Wolf in Ships Court now? Some of all of that. So, and so, psycho fancy, it's, you know, you're with the APC. You would never, you know, publicly condemn, you know, the leader of the party and the president. It's, it's expected. There's nothing new there. Yeah. Um, you know, you, it, the only decent thing that people would expect is, okay, well, at least be honest. Um, you know, at, at least be honest. You know, I'm not necessarily saying that you should go out there and say, you know, all sorts of rubbish about a person, but well, at honest, least be honest somehow, some way. You would be or, or at least stay silent. Anti party activities. Well, at least, at least, at least, at least, that happens to governors. At least stay silent. You know, so if you're if you're not going to be totally honest, then at least stay 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 silent. Mm. 
But once again, there's people in Nigeria that still believe that this is the best presidency and this is the best thing that's happened to Nigeria. And you can't take, take well, that away the, from the them. The president because already of how, said it. Because you, how, you will yeah, see the benefits after Absolutely, his because of how they've been affected personally by the government. Might be in the smallest way, hmm. but you know, there's, there's always those people. All right. So that's it on our top trending stories this morning. Let's take a break and we'll return with Off the Press. Stay with us.